Yo, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. How y'all doing today? It's your boy Mike D, aka DDE80. God bless, God keep. Thank y'all all all for coming in, listening to me over the airwaves. It's a rainy Thursday down here in the South. Shout out to everybody in the South. Shout out to everybody in the world. Most of all, shout out to the Point Place players. We're going to talk about a lot of things today. First of all, the biggest question of the day is who's going to win tonight's game? Is it going to be the Vikings or the Eagles? That's one thing. A, a, a subject that I tripped off of is I cannot believe that the Oakland A's has lost 100 games this season. Man, that whole organization need to go through a breakthrough and need to break that team up and get them back into what they are. And that's a great franchise. Talk about that. We're also going to talk about the WNBA games last night. Both teams mollywhopped the teams that they were playing. And I'm talking about the Aces and I'm talking about the Sun. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm also going to talk about the AEW results from last night's Dynamite show. And... I'm going to talk about the situation with Jay Cargill. There is a there is a big speculation that Jay Cargill could possibly be signing with WWE. And I'll tell you more about that and I will tell you the reason why I say that coming up. Everybody's here for a purpose. Make sure that your purpose is good. Make sure you're diligent in your purpose and you're consistent with it. That's just the word of the day for me. 13th Wonder of the World is here to talk. <laughs> Shout out to Lynn Mason. Uh, first of all, I want to start off with the game tonight between the Eagles and the Vikings. I think that the Eagles are going to win. I, don't, I didn't like the way that they played against us last week. When they played against us last week, they almost lost the game to the Patriots. Like I said before, I don't expect the Patriots to do too much this year. I expect them to get in the playoffs and that's it. I don't think we're going to be playing for a Super Bowl this year. We have weapons, but Mac Jones has got to get it together on the field. You know, and that's that's one of the things right there. But the Eagles... They slid by and beat the Patriots. I think they're going to try to mollywop the Vikings because Thielen's not there anymore. Jefferson's still there. He's going to have a great game in my book because they're not going to be able to stop him on the slants and over the throw, over the head passes that Cousins throw to him. I think that Kirk Cousins will go for over 200 yards tonight. That's just a little shout out to DraftKings, FanDuel. Bet Rivers and all those boys that are in the sport business, sport betting business. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that Jalen Hurts could possibly go for 300 yards, but I think he's going to go, he's going to rush for at least 50 or 25. Don't know. Have to figure that out when the game starts. A.J. Brown's going to be a weapon. Hollywood Brown is going to have to be a weapon in this game tonight. I think that A.J. Brown can, can get the thing going. I think that he can, you know, spread out the defense of the of the of the Vikings, excuse me, I was about to say the Lions, and make it be a stretch game. The run game is gonna is gonna probably be the best thing that the Eagles have because the Eagles are a great running team. Because if they were the great running team, they wouldn't have been they wouldn't have been playing the Super Bowl last night. Your run game has to be official. That's how Teams win games. The passing is great, but can you chew up the clock with the yards? That's a possibility. We'll see what happens tonight. I think the Eagles will win. I'm going to say they probably win by 10. Because I think the the Vikings are going to put up a fight. Because remember, the Vikings lost last week as well, last Sunday. So they're going to be in the mind frame ready to go. I will give you guys Saturday. I will give you guys the games who I think of the the winners of the games for Sunday. I know that the Patriots 
and the Dolphins play, I think it's sun, either Sunday night or Monday night. And I'm going to be intense to that game because I want to see what my boys do against Tula and them because Tula and them are serious. Tyreek Hill and, you know, shout out to them boys and, and the Dolphins. I don't want the Dolphins to win the division, but Tula is playing like the guy that we know that has the potential to play in the NFL. The injuries and all the other foolishness, he could put that to the side and just concentrate on his football game, you know. And that's what I think about that. I think that the – but tonight's game, I think that the Eagles will win tonight's game, ladies and gentlemen. I think that the Eagles will win by at least 10 – 7 to 10 points. All right. The Oakland A's lost 100 games this season. Man, I know that baseball is like a 180-game season. But you mean to tell me, out of a hundred and such and such games, you lost a hundred such and such games? Man, Oakland, look, man, I'm going to tell you this out of love because I like the A's. I think that they had, they, you know, the history of the, the lineage of the, of the Oakland A's. You need to take that organization and start over with them, man. You need to just break that whole team up and start over again, bro, because that there was to that's totally unacceptable to lose that many games. And I know there's a lot of teams that's lost 100 games before, but this is the first time. And, they, and when I saw it, I like, they had as a headline, the Oakland A's lose 100 games. You have went over a century mark in losses? I'm not going to ride you high, and I'm not going to ride you low. But I will say this. Come on, guys. Come on. Please do something better next season for your team, bro. This is not what it is, man. I don't like to hear that or see that. Come on. The Houston Texans, the Texas Rangers have been on a winning streak. Uh, the Seattle Mariners, they won. That that little issue right there, they, the Cincinnati Reds are probably going to be the last team to get into a wild card. So we're going to see how that ends up as baseball starts winding down as well. Because we know that the World Series usually be in the at the end of October or the middle of October or something like that. The Braves have clinched, and they 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 <laughs> – they say they was taunting the, the Philly crowd when they won. <laughs> Man, that's crazy. But shout out to Acuna Jr. Because I think that Acuna Jr. will be the, in, the MVP of the, a, of, of the division. I think it's the AL or the NL. I think whatever the – yeah. So, you know, that's what it is. I'm trying to be f accurate on my stats, ladies and gentlemen. So, if I mess up on one or mix one up, Please forgive me. Don't hold it against me. Also, ladies and gentlemen, the WNBA had started their playoffs last night. And both teams, both home teams, beat the visiting team by 30 points. I think Asian them was off by three, but they blew them out. The Chicago Sky had no chance against the Aces, man. And, and that girl, Jackie Young and, and Chelsea, man, they are serious, man. Along with Asia, Chelsea Plum and Jackie Young and, you know, those girls, Chelsea, those girls are exactly what I'm talking about that is the heart of a champion. Yeah, they lollygag in some of the games in the regular season. But when playoff time comes, they're on the boots. They are trying to put heads in coffins. And because of that, that's why I say that the Aces will probably win the whole thing. Stewie and them play tomorrow. They don't play tonight. They play tomorrow. We're gonna see what Stewie does and what the Wings and the and the Dream do when they when they play. 
because that's going to be interesting to see what happens in those, those two games tomorrow. I tell you this, and I tell you this because I'm seeing what I saw last night. Also, let's go to the first game, the Sun. Man, they were not playing. Bonner and Thomas are not playing. Man, they beat that team by 30. A 30 piece. And I think Bonner had like 30 something points or 32 or something like that. The girl still has it. Deanna Bonner still has it, ladies and gentlemen. She has it. The it factor is basketball IQ to score. Alyssa Thomas is doing the same thing. This team right here, and I'm going to tell you something. If they're number three, you know how the playoffs go. Two against three, one against five or four, whatever they, the seedings is four, I think, if I'm not mistaken, or something like that. You're going to see these two teams if it comes down to Stewie versus them in the second round, probably. If it happens. If that happens, I am here to tell you that could possibly happen. Bonner is not playing. She has tasted championship gold before. She knows how to win a, a championship. She won with Diana Taurasi. She, is a, she has the heart of a champion. The Connecticut Sun are serious, ladies and gentlemen. They are not a fluke team that's just in the playoffs. They are a team that could clip Asia and the Aces as well as Stewie and the Liberty. Because it's Stewie, it's Stewie and Asia. Those are the two teams that everybody expecting to play for the championship. But I'm here to tell you, Deanna Bonner and Alyssa Thompson, Tom, excuse me, may have something to say about that. Because the Connecticut Sun are not a joke. Just as well as the Liberty, not a joke. Just as well as Aces with Asia, not a joke. Joke, just imagine if Candace Parker was playing. They wouldn't have a shot. But I'm here to tell you, we're not gonna we're not gonna count out the teams that they're playing against because everybody has the heart to up get upset it in these playoffs. As you see what's happening in football, college football it happens every week. A top ranked team goes down to a bottom team. And by the way, college football starts back tonight. Uh, I, I forgot who's playing. I think it's uh, Navy and somebody. We're gonna. We're, I'm, I'm gonna look at that and see what's interesting in that. And then you know, I might come back and talk about that a little later. But I'm here to tell you right now that anybody can win these finals in the WNBA. The favorites are the Aces and the Liberty. But I'm also here to tell you that the Connecticut Sun, is they're coming. They're nipping and they're knocking on the door. Deanna Bonner's not playing, guys. Alyssa Thomas is not playing, guys. Keep an eye on those Sun. Also, ladies and gentlemen, there was a conversation, and I'm going to add this in. There was a conversation about who's the biggest threat to beating the Eagles if the Eagles make it to the NFC championship. The Dallas Cowboys could possibly be that team. But I'm also here to tell you that the San Francisco 49ers have just gotten better and better and better. Better and better and better, ladies and gentlemen, because I will say this about I will say this about the 49ers. Brock Purdy is proving to everybody that he deserves to be in the NFL. Brock Purdy is proving to everybody that he can help the 49ers win a Super Bowl. 
You got CMC, who's one of the best running backs in the game. But not only that, he can also catch the ball out of the pocket and run the ball for touchdowns and run passes, get passes for touchdowns, excuse me. You got Debo Samuel, he's still there. You got George Kittles that's still there. You got Bosa that just got the big bag by the 49ers. You've got a roster that the 49ers can get to the Super Bowl. But they got beat last year by the Eagles. So in the back of their mind, they're thinking about that. Then you got to think about the Dallas Cowboys. Dak Prescott has has dreams about losing two straight playoff games in the two years to the 49ers. Jimmy G beat him one year, and Brock Purdy beat him last year. That's in the back of his mind. He's still wondering how he's going to get over that hump in trying to beat these guys. The 49ers are serious. They are a legitimate team that could possibly get to the Super Bowl. And I'm telling you this right now. That is going to be one of the main, main, main additions to why I say what I said about the 49ers. The 49ers are the complete team to beat to get to the far, to get to the Super Bowl. You got to go through the 49ers. Dak Prescott has to go through the 49ers. You know what I'm saying? Jalen Hurts, again, in order for them to get to where they want to get to try to hold up a trophy, they have to get through the 49ers. The 49ers are the biggest threat to the Cowboys for, for the Cowboys to win a championship or get to the Super Bowl. That who stands in their way. Brock Purdy stands in the way of Dak Prescott. George Kittles stands in the way of C.D. Lamb. You see what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? CMC stands in the way of Pollard. Those are the matchups, if it happens. Now, ladies and gentlemen, week two was going to be interesting between the Cowboys and the Jets. Aaron Rodgers is not playing. Zach Wilson is playing. Let me tell you something, that what, what might happen in this game. Everybody thinks that the Cowboys are probably going to beat these guys by 20 points. I am here to tell you, the defense of the New York Jets is going to stample and try to get Prescott to hurry the ball, throw the ball out of the pocket, and try to get to him to sack him. I'm telling you, the Jets have a great defense, ladies and gentlemen, but will that defense be able to, to make Dak Prescott uncomfortable? And I got a question for you. Probably so. I'm telling you. The offensive line, let me, let, me, let me break this down to you. Last week, the New York Giants had no chance of beating the Cowboys. This week, the New York Jets have a possibility of beating the Cowboys, and I'll tell you why. The offensive line, and this is the most important decision and the most important move that needs to be made this week. The offensive line of the Dallas Cowboys have got to stop the defense of the New York Jets. Those boys have got to make sure that Dak Prescott is protected at all times. Because they're coming for him. I don't care what nobody says. The, the Jets defense is coming for the Dallas Cowboys and Dak Prescott. I'm telling you what I know. You see what they did to, the, to, to Josh Allen last week, Monday? Josh Allen is one of the greatest football players in Bill's history. He needs to figure out a way to try to get his team to a Super Bowl. The pressure is still on him, just as well as the pressure is on Dak Prescott. Because I believe that Josh Allen can still do it. Him and Stephon Diggs, they have to, whatever issue that they have, work it out try to work this out for the season that they can win the games because I'm telling you now and I'm telling you with all I know this is going to be the test of the week for the Cowboys if the Cowboys can stop the Jets if Dak Prescott can be loosely throwing the ball and all that there then they got a chance to win but if that defense of the Jets 
hurry and pressure and knock and try to sack Dak Prescott. Every he's gonna have a hard day. He's gonna have a hard day playing against them. But we all just gotta watch the game and see what happens. You know, I think that the Cowboys are gonna win, even though I don't like them. I think they will beat the Jets, but I think they will beat the Jets not by a landslide. I think they will beat them, you know, by three or four points or something like that, no no more than seven. But if the Jets pull up this upset, which they are capable of doing, because Zach Wilson has proven to me that he can play in the NFL. You know, there's been times he's been playing wishy-washy, but he has to step his game up now. Because Aaron Rodgers is not there. You cannot fall back on Aaron Rodgers because he's out for the season. Maybe he might come for the, for the playoffs. I don't know. Maybe he might be able to play for the playoffs. I, I probably doubt it. I doubt that he will. But we're going to see. We're going to see what's going to happen in that situation, ladies and gentlemen. On another note, excuse me for a minute as I drank some water. Also, um, there was a report out, and this is now tending to wrestling. There was a, uh, a report out that Jay Cargill could possibly be leaving AEW to come to WWE. About two, three months ago, they had a, a notion that Jay Cargill was not coming back to AEW. The girl was on the contract with AEW, so she had to come back. They were giving her time off because she had this great, incredible run where she was a 60-0 and 0 winner of her matches. She only lost one match, and that was to Chris Stanladder. Well, ladies and gentlemen, make that 60-2 and two because Jay Cargill lost on Rampage, and I don't want to spoil the whole thing, but there are reports out saying that she lost. So, and me, being the wrestling guy that I am, I figured when they announced that match last night on Dynamite, I said, oh, yeah, she's going to lose. She's going to lose. I mean, if, if she would have re-signed, let me tell you something. Let me tell you guys something about wrestling. Jay Cargill, if she would have re-signed with AEW, she probably would have won that title back, lost it again, and then elevated to the top to go, up, go after Paige for the women's title. It's not going to happen. She lost. And now it's saying that she is no longer with AEW, possibility she's going to leave AEW, or this could be just a plan of hers and Tony Khan to have people like us thinking that. But I will say this. If she signs with WWE, if I am the sponsors and the, 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 the Nick Khan and, you know, Bruce Pritchard and Triple H, and I'm not sending her to NXT. No way in the world would I send her to NXT unless they want her to go up against Becky Lynch. Because Becky Lynch is going to be on Raw and NXT now because she's the NXT Women's Championship champion. Jay Cargill versus Becky Lynch would be one of the greatest matches I've ever saw. We were robbed in AEW of a match between Dr. Britt Baker and Jay Cargill. We were robbed of a match between Jay Cargill and Soraya, a.k.a. Paige. I am telling you, AEW could have made some more women matches for that girl. That would have been one of them. But now, if she's about to sign with WWE like people are saying, can you imagine the matches she's going to have? But here's one match that I think would possibly happen. Charlotte Flair versus Jay Cargill. If you start that match right there off the bat, 
I guarantee you, you will put butts in seats because the audience will be involved in that rivalry. Because Jay Cargill has already said she respects Charlotte Flair and Charlotte Flair says she respects Jay Cargill. I am telling you, I am telling you, ladies and gentlemen, that would be one of the best matches of all time. One of the greatest women matches of all time. Jay Cargill versus Charlotte Flair. Or, here's another one. Jay Cargill versus Bianca Belair. Two black phenomenal wrestlers getting it on in the ring. You think WWE wouldn't, wouldn't set that up? You think people wouldn't pay to watch that? You doggone right. Because both of those girls are pretty doggone strong. Jay Cargill and Bianca. What a match that would be. I, and I'm just, I'm just brainstorming with the matches. That, those are so many great matches you could see happen if that was to happen. Also, ladies and gentlemen, let me get a drink of water. Also, ladies and gentlemen, that is what the dirt sheets are saying about Jay Cargill, that she could sign with WWE. Rhea Ripley versus Jay Cargill, that's money. Raquel versus Jay Cargill, that's money. Nia Jax versus Jay Cargill, that is Matt money. Tiffany Stratton versus Jay Cargill, money. You see what I'm saying? You can eat Nikita Lyons, who's who's off right now, versus Jay Cargill. That's money. Natalia versus Jay. Man, I'm telling you, you can see all the best of these matches here. Liv Morgan versus Jay Cargill. Oscar at Jay Cargill. Bailey versus Jay. If this is if this is true, then guess what, guys? You're going to see Jay Cargill record shop. And that's my word on that, ladies and gentlemen. But there is, that is the speculation that Jay Cargill will probably be going ahead in the WWE. And I think she was there a while back, but she never made it on camera, if I'm not mistaken. I can't really remember. I know she was there, but she ended up signing with AEW. Now that she got AEW under her belt, you're seeing... That she's probably going to go to WWE. And let me tell y'all guys something about this. This is why I say that we're, we're, that we're heading back into the wars of the wrestling. Of the wrestling war, excuse me. If you don't like it in AEW, come to WWE. WWE is going to either put you in NXT or put you on the main roster. Okay. You see now... That people are leaving AEW to come to WWE or come back to WWE. Cody Rhodes was the AEW executive vice president, which means he was in charge of some of the decisions that they made in AEW. He signs for WWE. Me and Williams was talking about this a long time. I say, man, WWE has AEW there. He said, yeah, that's what it is. The guy was in charge. He was one of the guys in charge of the company. And he left to come to WWE. Brian Pillman Jr. is in NXT. William Regal is in NXT. He's off camera because he signed a deal where his face can't be shown on WWE television for a whole year. Brian Pillman Jr. is going to be wrestling in NXT soon. The same Brian Pillman that was with Griff Garrison. And the girl, uh, the girl that's with uh the, the House of Black, Julia Hart. Now Jay Cargill was one of the fixtures of AEW women's wrestling. It's possibly going to WWE. This might be a ploy to have us thinking that she's going and she stays with AEW. But I think that she's going to WWE because the simple fact of the matter is she just lost her second match. I think they brought her back 
And then we'll go on to the AEW results from last night. I think they brought her back so that she could finish out the contract and leave. That's exactly what I think they did. <clears throat> Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. We're just getting some water. But I do believe that's exactly what happened. I think that's why they that's why Jay Cargo went back to AEW. All right, ladies and gentlemen. The results from last night. <laughs> I'll just play it. The results from last night, uh, AEW Dynamite uh show. Great show. Uh to be honest with you, I liked it what I saw. Um they had some some great matches. Uh, I'm still I'm still I'm still not with the Christian and the uh, the Darby Allen storyline, man. I, the Nick Wayne, they, it's they need to do away with that. They need to, and now it's gonna be Sting and 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 Darby against Luchasaurus and Christian. Um, I think it's either next week or at the pay-per-view that they're supposed to be having in October on the 1st. I don't know why people are, you know, I I, I just, I, I don't understand that storyline with Christian, man. But Darby Allen and Nick Wayne, they did beat uh, the former Jericho boys. We used to call them, uh, at, was it Everrise? Is that who they were? I think it was, I think those boys were Everrise. But, uh, you know, uh, you know, Luke Kennard and and Magic Daddy Magic Bernard, whatever his name is, you know, those guys they're they're still trying to find their way. They still got uh, you know, the girl Anna J with them, and you know, they broke up the Jericho Society, which I thought was one of the best groups that Chris Jericho had, you know. You know, the Pinnacle and the Jericho Society, man, you know, it's, it's, it was it, it, it was just that, you know, that's what it was, you know. Jericho and Sammy, you know, they're pumping up, they were hyping up their match and things like that. I do believe that Sammy Guevara will be Chris Jericho next week. I think that it's Jericho's turn to build up Sammy. I think Jericho will be the guy that takes the pin because he has nothing else to really do right now but to build up the wrestlers. And that's what Chris Jericho's job is. And then they may win the tag team titles. They may. They may beat FTR. I don't know because FTR is on a whole nother mission, man. They're on a whole, they're on a whole different page, man. FTR is. Also, John Moxley, AEW International Champion, defeated Big Bill. We all know Bill is Big Cass from WWE. Uh, John Moxley, I think they have they're having a little storyline where I think it's going to be John Moxley going up against Ricky Starks. I think that's going to be the next uh, the next rivalry. It's going to probably be Ricky Starks against John Moxley because right now they're intertwining with them. And uh, the the Blackpool Bullet Club, Blackpool Club, even though you saw your boy come out there, uh, Claudio, I call him Cesario though, but uh, he's got a big match against uh, against Eddie Kingston, where Eddie Kingston's belt is going to be on the line as well as the Ring of Honor World Title that he has, and I do believe that he's going to do the job, and Eddie Kingston's going to probably have both of those belts, but. Right now, they're dealing with Ricky Starks and uh, Big Bill. Um, and John Moxley, like I told you, like I tell you every week, ladies and gentlemen, John Moxley's job is not to be in the main event no more. His job is to be in the mid-card to where he's fighting against mid-card wrestlers. Now, next week, he's going to go up against one of the Lucha brothers. I think it's Penta, if I'm not mistaken. Um, they're going to have a match next week on 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 a dynamite, AEW Dynamite, and you know that John Marks is gonna put on the show, but in the end, he's gonna win the title. He's gonna keep the title. He's not gonna lose it. He's gonna Penta probably will win, but I think he's gonna put he's gonna he's going to 
lose that he's gonna lose the match but i think moxley's still gonna be the champion that's what i think and i don't know where orange cassidy is fitting in this but i think it's probably gonna be a rematch between him and moxley for the title because every time you see moxley have a situation uh, after a match then they straight go straight to orange cassidy you know or hook and Orange Cassidy might have a match for the for the uh, FTW World Title. That could be a matchup you guys might not you might might not mind wanting to see because I would love to see that as well in the friendly competition. So you know things like that. Great matches, great rivals building up. Uh, looks like Tanaska and Kenny Omega is probably going to end up fighting again. I do believe, I think that they will, they will have another wrestling match. And I think Kenny Omega will probably get the win this time. Um, he's like a thorn in Kenny Omega's side, especially Don Callis when he came out there and looking at uh, your boy, uh, Daniel Garcia, do this little dance he be doing and stuff like that, you know. Um, also, I will say this, ladies and gentlemen. I think that Sammy Guevara is going to have a heel turn. I, I just don't know when it's going to happen, but I do believe it's going to happen because if Don Callis gets to him, it's going to happen. If he gets to, to, to Daniel Garcia, it's going to happen. It just That's just what I see. Tony Storm wins the Fatal 4-Way match, so she her... And Soraya, a.k.a. Paige, are going to fight next Wednesday for the AEW Women's Championship, which I think that Paige is going to keep Soraya Paige. I call her both. But I think that Soraya is going to win that match, and it's going to just cause more dissension between, you know, those three, as well as Rui Soho, who's also in the middle of it. And also, ladies and gentlemen, I keep telling you, that there's going to be a rivalry match between Britt Breaker and Hikaru Shida because they're still getting into it every time they get in the ring. They might as well sign the match, make it happen between those two. That's going to be a great match, though, by the way, when you see those two fight. And I'm trying to figure out why is Britt Breaker not fighting for the women's title? She might be fighting for the TBS title. You never know. I told you guys, do not trust Britt Baker. Young Bucks came out to help Adam Page, Hangman Adam Page in his match against Brian Cage. Brian Cage got beat by, you know, by Adam Hangman Adam Page. Swerve Strickland came out there talking and saying, calling the man a turd and all this stuff here. And then next day, you know, Brian Cage attacked, you know, Adam Page and Prince Nada in there dancing. He's getting all hyped up, crunk and everything. And then the Young Bucks came in there and kicked both of them. So the Young Bucks are down with Hangman Page. So we're going to see what happens when Swerve and Page go at it because they're going to go at it on October the 1st in Seattle. Shout out to Swerve Strickland. I like him. You know, I like his character. I also like ha Hangman Adam Page, but who knows who's going to win that match. That's a toss-up. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, also, man, Roderick Strong versus... <laughs> Roderick Strong versus Samoa Joe. Of course, you know Joe's going to kill you. That's exactly what happened. Roderick Strong tapped out. He's got the neck problem, courtesy of the match he had with Samoa Joe. And they were Arabs coming to the ring, taking uh, Roderick Strong on the stretcher. Adam Cole came out there. The kingdom gets mad at Adam Cole. Then Adam Cole wants to go see Roderick Strong. Roderick Strong was calling, talking about, Adam, I can't see you. Adam telling him, I'm here and all that there. Next thing I know, this is what, to get at MJF, Joe chokes out Adam Cole. Just to get to the attention 
of MJF, MJF for the title match next week. Now, I will say this. Samoa Joe is going to be a great, great contender for Max, but MJ, Jim, MJF's not going to lose that title next week. He's not going to lose that title in New York City. It's not going to happen because they have put the rocket on him to keep him going. It's not time for him to lose that title yet. If it was time for him to lose that title, Samoa Joe would be the guy to do it. But I don't think he's going to beat him. I'm going to tell you who I think is going to beat MJF. Adam Cole. Adam Cole, in my book, I could be wrong, ladies and gentlemen, but his tag team champion partner is going to be the one that beats him. Because Adam Cole is due to be a world champion. Watch what I tell you. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's, it's going to happen because the writing's on the wall. That's what's going to happen. Believe me. I may be wrong, but I'm telling you, I know wrestling. They pull fast ones on me, but most of the time I'm very accurate about what happens on wrestling. Also, ladies and gentlemen, Friday Night Smackdown comes on tomorrow, and it's the return of the 16-time WWE champion, John Cena. He's going to be on the Grayson Waller show. I think that's the only thing I know right now that's going to happen on there. Um, Jimmy Uso's drama with the bloodline. AJ Styles, his drama with the OC. You know, Rey Mysterio, the United States champion, and what's going to happen with Austin Theory and all these guys. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you SmackDown is going to be great. As well as we know tonight is Impact Wrestling. They are supposed to be having their thousandth episode. I think it's tonight, starting tonight or whatever. I might watch it to, you know what I'm saying, to talk about TNA. Because I don't talk about TNA like talk about it. But I will talk about it for their 100 episodes, which I think is going to be two of the thousand episodes of uh, Impact Wrestling. And, you know, it's a blessing. And thank God. Because it's a blessing that they were able to have a thousand episodes. Because TNA, let me tell y'all something about TNA. The product went from the top of the chain all the way down to almost to the end of the chain, ladies and gentlemen. They had, at one time, they had the biggest boast and the biggest booth in, protect, in, in professional wrestling because they were protected by the numbers. The viewers are the protectors. If you watch it, it's protected. And the problem was, is that the deals that they made, they made some bad deals in the past with these television companies. Do you think that if Spike TV would have asked them for another, another chance, you think Spike TV would not have put TNA back on? Yes. Impact Wrestling would have a home on, on Spike. And I don't know what all happened with that or whatever. Destination America, which was WGN. I had said Fox Sports 1. Because Fox, for, Spot, excuse me, Fox Sports 1 had TNA on there. At the time, they were just at the bottom trying to come up. If I was them, I'm glad they're on Axis TV. I'm glad that Impact Wrestling has their own channel on Roku. But I'm here to tell you guys, there is something that they need to do better. They, they have great product. They have great superstars there. They got people I like on that show. But I'm here to tell you, you need to try to make another move to make your product seen somewhere else. Don't get me wrong. Access TV is fine. It's a music channel. You want to watch. You, all you're going to do is watch music videos on there. But you're going to watch New Japan Wrestling as well as Impact. And that's the only thing about it. Some people don't even watch Access TV until Thursdays. Because they know Impact and New Japan Wrestling is going to come on there. 
But I am proud of them for having a thousand show. Shout out to them for that. There's no ill blood here between me and them. There's no ill saying between me and them. I am proud of them. They were able to do what they need to do to stay on. And that's what they did. They stayed on. And for that, they get my respects. But ladies and gentlemen, it's been fun. I'm glad that you spent your time with me. God bless you. God keep you. I probably will come back on later on just for a minute to talk about the props and the things for tonight's game between the Eagles and the Vikings. If you want to put your money down on it, you don't have to spend that much. Put your money down and see what happens. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Mike D, a.k.a. DDE80, a.k.a. 13th Wonder of the World. Y'all enjoy y'all Thursday. God bless you. God keep you. I love all of y'all. Thank y'all for listening. Appreciate you.